This is the EDA video you didn't know you'd been waiting for. I'm really keen to show this to our Zookin customers and the extended EDA community. Direct Gerber Import. ECAD Start offers users the ability to directly import Gerber data into the PCB environment. Why might you want to do this? Firstly, it gives you the opportunity to review your Gerber data without having to use an external viewer. File, new, PCB, pull in the Gerber data, review it, maybe even use that to panelize it and output them again. Along the same theme, it gives you the opportunity to quickly import working Gerbers from your PCB fabricator so you can quickly review any manufacturing compensation that they might have applied ahead of okaying their master Gerbers for production. In addition to simply reviewing the data, eCADSTAR has a great feature set that allows us to quickly and easily convert this flat, unintelligent manufacturing Gerber data into valid DRC compliant EDA data, which we can then use in our design. Perfect for reverse engineering a design from legacy Gerber data. Basic Gerber import. First of all, I create a new PCB using an eight layer stack up tech file. I'm also pointing to an existing schematic. I don't really need either of these for a simple Gerber review. I don't need the schematic and the PCB could be a simple single layer PCB. But because we're going to review some enhanced functionality in the second part of this video, I'll use them now. The first thing I do when I get into the new PCB is disable both DRCs and change my routing grid to something very large. I'll explain the large routing grid in a moment. From the manufacturing tab, I can select photo data input. I'm going to import the top primary side conductor layer first. Now the first thing to note here is that for every single active layer in ECADSTAR, you have an equivalent drawing layer. You don't have to use these, you can define active layers for your drawing elements should you wish, but this is a really good example of when to use an associated drawing layer. So I'm importing the first Gerber file into my design. I'll start with the top primary side conductor. I'm importing this onto the conductor one layer in my PCB editor, but remember it will be on the drawing elements of the conductor one layer. I've written a quick macro to bring in the other seven conductor layers. And as you can see, I have customized my menu ribbon with some import features I use a lot, including this import macro. If I zoom into the top copper, the primary side copper, you will see all we have are faint outlines rather than actual representative Gerber data. That's not strictly true. This is just a display option we have available to us. We can change between no width, which is what you see here, just a line representing the shapes, or width, which is the outline of the shapes, or fill. There's my eight conductor Gerbers imported. I chose to align them in a matrix just for this demonstration, but obviously you can place them coincident to replicate your layout. Now for the second part, which is really, really neat. Let's turn that flat, unintelligent Gerber data into usable EDA data. There are just a couple of steps to do this. What we're going to do now is use the duplicate layer command. So I can duplicate this document layer data onto a proper electrical conductor layer. I repeat that for each imported layer, assigning them to their correct conductor layer. The reason I'm duplicating the layers and not just moving them is so that I have the original Gerber to use as a reference. Once I've completed converting these to the electrical layers, I'll turn off the drawing layers um, so we can just see the electrical conductor elements. As I hover over the trace elements, you can see that my optional object balloon tells me that this is a line um, it's on the conductor one, my primary elect layer, but yet it has no net name assigned. I can change the display settings to make this more obvious. 
In addition to changing the color for no net conductors, I can also display the signal names on the conductors. And for the no nets, you will see it displays a temporary net name. I'll just move these few nets here just to reiterate that these are now proper electrical rule compliant nets, no longer flat drawing Gerber data. Watch what happens as I select a device and I move this device into a location on top of our newly imported and converted Gerber data. The new electrical conductor layers inherit the net name from the pads. You can see now that some of the nets, the temporary nets, the grey nets have changed colour to green. This is because they're now fully compliant conductors with a signal name that it is inherited from the device pins. Don't forget we still have the drawing layers disabled in the background so if we wanted to make changes we can make changes and we can review the impact compared with the original. Of course you don't even need a schematic and netlist. You can import Gerber data, convert it to the relevant conductor layers, position footprints directly from your library to align with the Gerber data. Note that your library footprint pads do not need to be exactly the same as the pads on the imported Gerber data. A trace in ECAD star makes its electrical connection as soon as it touches the pad, not the centroid of the pad. Once positioned, use the add netline command to add nets between pads. Utilizing the 3D view, you can then trace the connections back easily and continue adding the net connectivity at PCB level. You can then even save and back annotate a node-to-node, -node, pin to pin compliant schematic from this data. Let's just review what we've done. We've imported some Gerber data into our ECAD star editor for review onto its own dedicated layer. We've then quickly duplicated each of those Gerber imports onto the appropriate electrical conductor layer, leaving the original import as a permanent point of reference. We've utilized an existing schematic and placed connected devices coincident with our newly converted Gerber tracking. The tracks automatically inherited the net names from the connected devices that were placed on top of them. Additionally, we then placed parts directly from our library with no schematic connectivity and we manually added rat's nest connections to those devices. So that's Gerber import review and manipulation, a really, really useful feature set in Zucan's ECAD star.